for the longest time, developers have been requesting camera access, not only for Quest devices, but in many other devices available today. Android XR promises it, Vision Pro offers it only to enterprise developers, but today Meta is opening Quest 3 and Quest 3 has camera access to everybody. Today, I'm super excited to show you how to get started with pass-through camera access with a full walkthrough, including some cool demos. All right, first, pass-through camera access is going to require V74 or greater. This means that your headset is going to have that operating system, as well as Meta SDKs with the same version. A new Android permission is also available, and you'll need to add it to your Android Manifest XML before the camera is going to be able to work. You need access from the user to be able to do that. Another important aspect about PCA is that the underlying technology that Quest is using is the Android Camera 2 API. This means that we're going to be able to access the camera data by using the Webcam Texture Manager available in Unity and provided by Meta. This class is going to allow us to get a stream information and that data that is streamed through the Webcam Texture is going to be able to be used with a raw image or an actual image in Unity. All right, guys, so let me show you one of the demos that was just released today. And the first one is a multi-object tracking example. You guys are gonna see how we start to get bounding boxes for the detected monitors. It works really well. It's not as fast as you would imagine on you know, other type of devices such as mobile, but it works quite well for the first version of pass-through camera access that released today. You can see that the monitors get detected. We have the keyboard. Also, my hand is detected as a person. And then the chair as well got detected fairly quickly. So for this next demo, I wanted to check out the brightness level and see how accurate it was. So you can see I have the light basically facing the cameras on my Quest 3 and the brightness level is changing fairly quickly. On this other one, it's a, it's a really cool one because it allows you to basically place this frame on the real world. And what happens is when you pause it, it allows you to pause the frame and then you can walk around and see what your headset was actually looking at. You can see my hands in here, I can move them really fast. And I didn't really notice any you know low performance on this. The device was just performing as normal. I also was running the stats before and you know it was working really well also you need permissions you know to be able to access the camera and that's something that i'm going to be showing you today is the android permissions that you're going to have to add this demo right here is really really cool and it shows you the reflections and you know one of the many use cases that you can add to your experience and it really adds to it right because you can start incorporating these to any you know indefinite number of different applications that you develop. So now what I want to show you though is what we need to do to set up the project. We're going to be adding a pass-through building block and I'm using version v74 of building block so they did a really cool revamp of the UI. I'm also I also added controller tracking so just make sure you do that and then I'm using the project setup tool to get things set up fairly quickly and then I'm going to drag and drop this folder and I'm going to be linking the actual GitHub repo that you can, you know, you can use to download the examples. So if you go under prefabs and basically drag and drop the webcam texture manager prefab, this is going to be the entire glue from the actual Android camera API too. And it's actually called Android Camera 2 API. And this shows you exactly what you need to do. We're gonna be getting permissions. We're also going to be basically running a core routine that is going to initialize the webcam texture. There's a while looping here that is going to make sure that we get the camera, the device populated correctly so that we can pass it to the webcam texture and then also specify the resolution. You don't need to specify the resolution, and if you don't, the, the system is going to use the highest resolution available. And then this is going to show you a pass-through camera utils, which is really cool because it gives you a lot more functionality as well, including specifics about the camera. And I'll show you that today as well. But this is how you get the webcam texture. You can use this component. And then the pass-through camera utils, like I said, it has different features 
whether we want to find out if this is supported on a specific device, what the different intrinsics of the camera are, the specs of the camera, such as resolution, and then also a couple of different methods that you can access as well to get you additional information. And then we're going to be creating a brand new script in here. This script is going to be very simple in a way that all we're really going to do is basically get the webcam texture. And then once we have the texture, we're going to be bringing that into a raw image. So the way that this works is we're going to be basically creating an instance of the webcam texture manager. That's going to happen when you drag and drop the component here. We're just going to reference that component. And then we're also going to need a couple of different TextMesh Pro text boxes because I want to show you when the actual texture is ready and also additional specs about the camera. So we can have these two in here. I might add another later. So for these, we're going to need an IE enumerator. The reason for that is because we need to keep looping through and waiting until the webcam texture has been initialized. And the way that they did it on the examples is by doing a while loop. I don't know if this is the best way to do this. I would have done it differently, but that's how they had it on their example. So I'm following that same pattern. So what you're going to do here is I'm going to just basically display that the webcam texture object is currently you know ready and playing. That means that we did get permissions and then we're going to be basically let you or let the user know that the webcam texture is currently playing. And then we can just get the texture like I show you here by accessing the property from the webcam texture manager. And then I duplicated the debug info because I'm going to be displaying the device intrinsics. I don't know why they use that name. I think that's a that's a name. That's just a word that I, you know, I'm not really familiar with. But it's basically the details about the camera, right? So what we need to do is we need to pass in the actual eye that this camera was assigned to or the texture was assigned to. Then we can pass it into our method. This we're going to use to basically create a new variable, which is going to be called camera details. And we're going to be using this to basically display information into our text mesh pro. And the information that you're going to have is going to be the principal point, the focal length, resolution, and also the SQ value. So we're going to be able to see that when we run the application. Then let's go ahead and go into the, not into that, we can go into building blocks using the Meta XR tools icon and then drag and drop the grab interaction. The reason for that is because I want to be able to grab this texture and then basically move it around so that we can look at different areas. I think, I think that part is going to be cool. And then we just resize the collider. So now what I'm going to do though is we can add or a script that we just created. Let's go ahead and drag it and drop it. And then we can start associating some of these different you know, serializable fields to the appropriate values. The other two text boxes, so just go ahead and add two of them. I have one for the debug info, one for the device. And then I realized that I needed to change these to a different type. So I always get confused between those two. Just make sure that you use the text mesh pro you GUI and that's the one that it's going to, you know, it's going to work for what we need. Then this is really important to know too. This is going to basically add the permission that we need automatically. We're basically going to get a pop-up and then when that pop-up comes up, this is a permission that we're going to need to provide in the Android XML. You can add it yourself manually or you can let the system do it. You can see here the prompt when we run this on the actual device. And then once we accept it, now we should start getting the actual camera access. You can see that everything is rendering correctly. I can see my controllers. It's actually really, really fast and it works quite well. I was expecting to get the device to start warming up, you know, how it gets when you're processing a lot of texture data. But in this case, the device fell okay. And then I don't have the stats in here, but the CPU and GPU were, you know, were normal. We're over 60 frames per second on the FPS. So I think everything is really performing. All right, guys. So, well, there you have it. We have camera access available on the Quest 3 and also the Quest 3S. If you guys have additional questions, let me know in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell because that's going to help me in bringing you a lot more videos. And thank you to all my patrons for supporting my content. Happy XR coding, everyone.